this evening I'm going to do some work on my new game. Okay. So what I'm working on right now is terrain modification tool. So we can equip this broomstick and then if we use the tool, we are changing the shape of the terrain. This isn't something that I need for the current game project I'm working on, but it's something that I think could be nice. And it's something that if I don't include it from the start, it's not going to be easy to add it later. So specifically right now, what I'm working on is some odd shapes. So when there's two adjacent ones like this, they become the separate caps. It's because we don't have enough assets. So let's go into Blender. I think we can just make modifications to the existing assets that we have to accommodate for the more unique shapes that we want to be able to make. I recently started a new job and I'm now feeling fully settled in and comfortable with my new routine and tasks. I had a lot of anxiety when starting that I would struggle to pick up the new technology, but it has actually been really fluid, which is a huge relief. Now I have all this energy that I was missing before and I'm eager to use it for more game dev. I have an idea for a new tutorial series where I make a multiplayer game in Godot for Steam, something relatively simple, but that utilizes all the built-in features Steam offers when they host a game. I learned how to do all of this for my old game and remember documentation and tutorials being in short supply. I'd like to make it easier for others doing the same. Okay, that took a lot harder. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. That was very <laughs> difficult to get working. Um, actually setting up the meshes was relatively easy. I had made a combination meshes for all the corners. I wanted to export at first as FBX, every mesh, every object that I made in Blender. I wanted them to all be exported in FBX and batch in their own files. So I could just bring them in and I found a script someone had shared online in Python that did it. So then I just brought it in. Thank you, Brockman. It worked perfectly and I brought my files into Godot and then realized everything else is OBJs. So at first I tried just changing the file extension to OBJ everywhere and running it again, but that wasn't properly exporting it. I guess the function, the class that's used here for doing the export, they didn't have OBJ. They used to and they discontinued it. So then I had to look and find a different obj export i needed to write some code in so that the positions would get set to zero to the origin before they're exported because the original they're like spread out everywhere they were over here and then i had to set up the path mode copy i found out through trial and error because it's just like showing up white in Godot, but now i got that all fixed so df is one of the custom shapes i made so this is kind of like a straightaway so this is like on the F side, but it's a corner. It's not everything it could be, right? Because I think another thing I'll need to do is have a multi-corner piece. So that's missing from this. Now that I have the script ready to go, I can just do that. And I'm pretty pleased because this is something that like this script that I had to figure out tonight I'm going to use this so much now that I have it, so it's just very nice to have. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Alright, it's the next morning and I'm back. I'm going to see how the pieces that I made yesterday are looking in the actual project and then decide what other shapes I need to make. So let's get into it. The idea for this game is that you have a cozy home space you can decorate and do various tasks to earn money, customize your character, etc. And you can visit your friends' homes to socialize and interact with their space. It's heavily inspired by games like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, but much more simplified. The tutorial series I'm picturing will include setting up peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer, proximity voice chat, global text chat, achievements, leaderboards, Steam hosted save data, the Steam workshop, and possibly more. Leave a comment if there's something specific you want to see a tutorial on. I think it'll work. <laughs> I'm not sure. So let's take a look. We can just run the game. Oh, that looks crazy and wrong. Oh, and they just kind of don't fit together, huh? And they're like really raised up. That's 
I didn't notice that before. It's west and east and not north and south. So if a neighbor mask and north and south is equal to zero. Okay, so it is doing a standalone now. That's good. Yeah, I think I know what happened with the height. So I'll have to go back into Blender to fix that. So in the situation where there's multiple corner pieces, it doesn't know what to do yet. So that'll be another thing. I'm feeling now like the scope of this is a lot bigger than what I originally imagined. So 11 more pieces are needed for all these corner situations. Corner cases, you might say. But like 11 more pieces is kind of annoying. It's 11 more types I have to declare and do edge casing for. And I'm already feeling like doing this mask math is really annoying. Okay, but that's 11. And then actually this isn't enough because I need the corners for the non-internal shapes. So that's an extra four. So 15 more shapes. I also need to go into Blender anyway and fix the height on my floor caps. But this is getting to be a lot. And why? Because I think it looks neat. The alternative is to not let people have whatever train shape they want. But I feel like making a super versatile space for them to play in, having like to make some extra meshes is a small price. I think we can do it. Since my last recording, I did two streams where I was working on game dev and I was in Blender making more of the different tile pieces that I needed for making every possible combination of corners, inner corners, outer corners, sides. And someone in chat suggested to me that I take a look at this article by Boris the Brave about quarter tile auto tiling. In this, they describe a way that you can use a dual grid mode for auto tiling. There'd be four quadrants of this in an actual tile. Looking at how this worked, I felt pretty compelled to give it a try in my game. It seemed like an obvious solution. So I split into four different pieces for the tile and I shrunk them down into a quarter of the size and I changed the code for how I'm assigning the tiles to consider by quadrant here. In doing this, I was able to actually get it all working. So you can see the shape of it is a lot more square than it had been because we don't have the rounded caps. All the curves are considerably smaller smaller than they were, but now we can easily make these unique shapes that I was looking for without a lot of the trouble that I had been running into. As you can see, the heights on these are messed up when I go to taller positions. This thinks it's a height of two, but it took the mesh as if it was a height of one. So I just need to make some tweaks to the code to get that working, and then it should all be good. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I'm really happy that I was able to stream my work and that my chat had such an excellent suggestion for how to fix the problem. I am just excited to keep working on this project now and move forward from here and really grateful that I didn't have to spend weeks making different meshes in Blender to fill out my grid collection when really all I needed was to just shrink the existing tiles.